Good morning, dreamers. It is Margaret with Forward Kind Heart. Welcome to dream session number 10. Oh my gosh, so exciting. Again, thank you for bearing with me as I move. As you can tell, I'm still setting up the office space and spare bedroom slash my daughter's bedroom when she visits. So it's still a work in art or work in art, work in progress. So I'm Margaret with Forward Kind Heart. I'm a dream tender, a dream weaver. I love how dreams connect us to our soul's wisdom, connect us to our soul's purpose, connect us to our guides and ancestors and loved ones, as well as provide us with guidance and direction in our waking life. So let's go ahead and get started and we'll discuss some dreams today. And if you have a dream that you'd like to work with, you can go ahead and message me or um, join me live. That's the best way. That way we can really interact and get those juicy dream messages. Okay, so let's go ahead and light our candle. Go ahead and do our little singing bowl. Okay. Oops. And then let's go ahead and pull a card for today. Let's see what card we get and how we can weave that into our dream magic. Oops, well, a couple fell on the floor. I'll get those later. So the card that popped up is this card. There we go. And this card is it's number 17. Story time. Settle down now. Ooh, so the light is who is the hero in your story and the dark, who is the villain? So perfect for working with dreams and really looking at um, who is the hero in your dreams and who is the villain in your dreams. Good stuff. Okay, so let's jump in to the dreams and what's kind of been the theme I've noticed for this week. Um, oh, and for those that are new, I'm Margaret with Forward Kind Heart. I specialize in not only dream tending, but also empowering empaths because they have the ability to transmute emotion. And I love really helping them to um, find their voice and empower them to be able to um, just share their gifts with the world. It's beautiful. So a couple of people reached out to me today with... Um, that feeling that you know they knew that they had these crazy really really active dreams and they knew a lot was going on and then when they woke up it was vague they only had like these little bits and pieces and they weren't sure where to go with that and this is a really common dream theme and this happens a lot you know we are busy in our days and our dreams often reflect that so if we're busy during our day a lot of times our dreams mirror our busyness and, you know, if you wake up feeling like you're tired or exhausted from your dream, take a moment to really look at, are you tired and exhausted in your waking life? Um, and that can, you know, help you to kind of start those self-care rituals. And when I say self-care rituals, I'm not talking about, like, the checklist. Like, okay, I went to the gym, I ate healthy, I did my yoga, whatever it is. I'm talking about self-care from the soul. This is what fills you up, what makes you feel good, rejuvenates you, makes you engaged and excited about life. If your self-care ritual isn't connecting you to yourself, then you need to really relook at your self-care. So, and our dreams can also bring that to attention to us if our self-care is not where it needs to be. So remember, self-care needs to come from the soul. It needs to fill you up. It needs to reinvigorate you. If it's not reinvigorating you, 
then you really need to look at it. And I'm, there's nothing wrong with eating healthy and exercising. Like that, that's important for a healthy life. But our self-care rituals need to be those things that we're just like, oh, I really needed that. I feel so much better now. You know, for some people, it's an Epsom salt bath. For others, you know, it's watching a funny movie. For some, it's having a really good cry or reading a good book or going out in nature. So really start to look at um, your self-care rituals. Okay, so again, back to these kind of fleeting dreams that just you're like, ah, I know I was busy. I know there was a lot going on. When you have these dreams, start with the feeling. Really start to look at how was I feeling during this dream? And then the little bits and pieces that you can remember, just take those and go with those. So maybe you remember there was a rabbit. So take that rabbit. How do you feel about rabbits? Do you like rabbits? You know, and start to look at, you know, what was the rabbit doing? Can you have a conversation with the rabbit? And a lot of times, and after you find your feeling about the rabbit, you talk with the rabbit, ask it what it was there for. Hello, thank you for watching. Then go back to, um, then you can uh, go into like the universal meaning because, you know, I love universal meanings. However, they don't always tell you what you need to know in your dream. It's another layer. So you're starting with yourself, your conscious mind, and then it's going to go into your subconscious, your soul, and then universal meaning as well as so many other things like our dreams are so multi-layered so rich with context you may have a dream about work and upon working with it realizing it was not so much about work but about maybe your life's purpose maybe a message from a deceased loved one so these dreams really do um, provide us with multi messages and you can even go back to a dream and start to rework it and then find another message. So really be open to the process of your dreams and the messages they have to bring you because they're rich, they're full, and look for those patterns. So back to these kind of dreams where you wake up and you know you, you, you had a lot going on. So then tapping into each feeling. And there could be a lot of feelings. Maybe you felt busy, maybe you felt tired, maybe you felt happy. Really tapping into all those different emotions and then all the little pieces that you can remember starting to work with those you don't have to remember the whole entire dream to get the message you don't even have to remember the dream to get the message because our messages our soul and our mind are processing what they can so a lot of times with really deep messages we might not Remember, also, if we are in a process of working stuff out, we might not remember those dreams because we might not need to remember them. It can be our soul and our subconscious working through stuff, and when it's ready, being able to provide us with those um, messages when we're ready to hear them. We're not always ready to hear the messages. So remember, being open, inviting yourself, to be open to the messages that your dreams want to tell you. So back to our card. Oops, let's move in, sorry, get up. Who is the hero in your story? And who is the villain in your story? So who, who is that hero? And I always like when we're talking about heroes and villains, and even in your dreams, so not even in your life, you can look at your life and you can look at your dreams and know, and identify who's the hero and who's the villain. And a really cool thing about working with heroes and villains is oftentimes our heroes mirror what the qualities that we already have. We may not recognize it yet, but we already have those qualities. And so that's a really cool thing about when you work with your heroes is to be like, ooh, so if that's a mirror and I already have those qualities, how do I find those qualities? How do I enhance those qualities? How do I honor those qualities? And the same thing with villains. So when you're looking at villains, they're mirroring back to you qualities you have as well and being able to say, 
ooh, how do I honor these? What do I want to do with these? How can I use these to benefit myself? How can I incorporate all of this, right? Because hero and villains, they are a whole. They need each other. A hero is not a hero without a villain, and a villain is not a villain without a hero. So they need each other. So being able to take your hero and your villain and making them into one can be really fun and very eye-opening. You know, it's always fascinating how the heroes you're drawn to can change and the villains you're drawn to can change. And for some people, they are definitely, you know, very comic book oriented. So, you know, I've worked with people that are like, oh my gosh, I'm totally like Batman. I'm totally like the Joker. I am totally like Lex Luthor and other people that it's from reality TV or from their favorite TV show or their favorite movie. And that's okay. Like you don't have to think heroes only in a certain context and villains and only in a certain context because they are the same. And villains often so many times represent our shadow. You know, we see ourselves in them and we project on them. Oh, I hate you. You're horrible. You're awful. And those are pieces and parts of us that um we deny so really being able to go back and look at that you know for a long time snow white was my shadow you know and she could be seen as a hero and not a villain so don't feel like a villain is a villain and a hero is a hero for some people the joker could be their hero darth vader could be their hero and that is okay you know because that is where they are in life. And so don't judge that, you know, don't be like, oh, my hero is actually a bad guy. You're identifying with that right now. Take that, work with that. That's beautiful. I hate Batman right now. I hate Superman right now. <sighs> beautiful. Take that, run with that, work with that. You know, what is it about them that you don't like? Because then again, that's something in yourself that you don't like and you need to work on incorporating and being able to make yourself whole. And I know I've said this before, a lot of times we're like, okay, I've got my hero, I've got my villain, and I've worked on it, and I'm feeling whole. That's just setting you up for another step of growth. So then you're really, like, oh, that person agitates me. Oh my God, that person is amazing. And we evolve that way, and we continue to grow. You know, it's so exciting. And so taking that time to really look at who are your heroes and who are your villains, and where can that um, in inspire you to grow? Uh, so in our dreams, it's the same thing. Who is the hero in the dream? Who is the villain in the dream? And in those elusive dreams where we're just kind of grasping, being able to be like, ooh, at this area I felt uneasy. I felt jealous. I felt angry. I felt, you know, those emotions that we avoid to feel. Oh, okay. So what was going on? Am I feeling those emotions in my waking life? Am I honoring those emotions in my waking life? A lot of times we don't like to sit with emotions that make us feel uncomfortable. And so being able to realize in your dreams if you're feeling those, how can you honor those? How can you sit with those? Because they're not going to go away. They're, they're just not. Our feelings are messengers. And so honoring them, it can be uncomfortable. And maybe it's like, okay, just for a minute today, I'll go ahead and I'll let sadness in. I'll let fear in. I'll let anger in. Go ahead and honor it. You know, take that moment to really honor yourself and your feelings and checking in. Why am I feeling sad? What is going on? I'm really angry today. We don't like, you know, a lot of times we kind of back away from anger because it's just powerful and fiery. Remember, a lot of times, anger, frustration is letting you know that you're off somewhere. Maybe your needs aren't getting met. Maybe you've given yourself too much and you need to, you know, take some time again for that soul care, you know, honoring that part of you. So again, look to your dreams to provide you with the guidance that you need in your waking life. So if you would like to participate, please. Send me, email me, message me, however it works for you, a dream that you'd like me to work with here, and I'll bring it here. And if you have a chance, you can join live and we can interact and go back and forth with what's going on in the dream. If not, you can watch the replay and um, get what you need from it that way. 
Also, if you haven't signed up, sign, ugh, sign up for my three day dream class. It's like an intro to really help you start to be able to work with your dreams and create that relationship with your dreams. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a beautiful rest of your day. Bye.